Darren reports from Free Geek in Portland. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. So Free Geek has been around for ages here in Portland. Is it only in Portland? Uh, Free Geek's not in Portland. We started here, but we, um, you know, the whole concept and Free Geek all started here, but then other organizations have said, hey, we really like what we're doing, what you're doing, can we do it as well? And uh, there are currently seven or eight other organizations that use the name Free Geek uh, and our logo or a version of our logo. And, um, and then there are a lot of other organizations that are using a lot of the same principles but don't necessarily have our name. So is it a 501c3? We are a 501c3. We, all of the different Free Geeks are completely independent of each other. We basically have allowed people to use our name and logo um, and ask them to adhere to certain principles but um, we don't have any oversight over what they do once we've given them permission to operate with that name. So, hi everybody, welcome to Free Geek. Uh, my name is Misty, I work here at the front desk and you'll see me all over the building running around. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you a little show and tell about uh, what we do and all the different programs. So basically we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our mission is first to reuse, then recycle computers and technology. We offer job skills training, education, and actual computers to the community in exchange for their community service. So it kind of is like a hackerspace and like there's guidelines and everybody kind of is moving in the same direction-ish. Right. But everybody makes it their own. But you have to, exactly, you've got to make it work for you and your community and so one prescription isn't going to fit everybody. Well, tell me about the uh, programs here at Free Geek. Sure, we've got a bunch of great programs um, that cover a wide range. So we have two main day-to-day -day volunteering tracks where people can uh, either learn how to build computers or they can deconstruct computers for ethical and environmental recycling. Uh, through both of those programs, our volunteers are able to receive free computers if they desire them. A lot of people don't have the need for the computer and they don't take it or they do take it and give it on to somebody else who they know who has a need. Uh, so we have two major programs. Adoption is basically the 24-hour fast track to getting your free computer. That's 24 hours total of helping us out with sorting different incoming goods and recycling. Uh, then we have the build program, which is more time and learning intensive. It can be anywhere from 55 to 90 hours of your time, um, but you're learning how to refurbish computers and build them with us. So you'll build six total computers and keep the sixth one for yourself. Look at that, the sun came out. <laughs> All right. Uh, so those are the major programs. We also have uh, some more advanced post-build volunteer opportunities like laptop and Mac build, um, internships in just about every area that we operate in, and uh, classes that are free and open to the community. So lots of learning uh, possibilities going on here. Um, we also have a ton of different internships available in all the different areas where we operate. Everything from helping with the books to our tech support to um, working in the thrift store. And so we provide a real wide range of job opportunities or job building, job skill building opportunities for our volunteers and our interns. Uh, we also offer an education program here that's free and open to the public. And our students are able to take classes on a wide range of topics from uh, internet nativity and being comfortable online and being safe online to how to use your Linux computer for the first time. Um, we even offer some basic programming classes as well and um, digital content creation classes like GIMP and Inkscape classes. So you're talking about a lot of open source software here. I was is, just about to say. Is Free Geek mainly open source? We are um, predominantly open source. We are huge proselytizers for the open source movement. We believe a lot in, um, in what free and open source software has to offer and it really makes it much better for us to do what we do. We love, we love putting Linux on our computers for several reasons. It really helps us, um, helps us with computers that might be outdated. If you're using a more bloated operating system, we're able to use pared down operating systems that can still take advantage of a lot of the hardware that's available. In fact, we have some Macintoshes that we rebuild with Linux 
that are currently out of OS support, and you're not even able to get a modern operating system for them. So wait, you're saying that you refurbish Macs? We refurbish. But you don't put Mac OS on them? But we don't put Mac OS what on them. What do you put on them? them? We do put a Linux, a flavor of Linux Yellow that- Yellow dog, or what is um, it now? No, we're, we're putting currently Zubuntu Linux on there that we modify just slightly for a free geek package, so. So you guys also do, what, kernel modifications for hardware? I mean, do do like, it commit is, code upstream to the Linux we, community? We do have staff here who are very involved with the open source community and do contribute to uh, kernel development. Um, we generally are building these packages for ourselves that we are, um, that we are maintaining and that we are able to support. So, uh, yes, we do try to contribute back to the open source community in ways that we can. I think that there's always more room for an organization like ours to do more with that, though, as well. Um, I would, I, it would be great for us to, to be even more uh, a bigger part of that open source community, but we do try to contribute back to that, and we do support that. And so what about the um, the desktops and the laptops? What, what's your, your go-to distribution? So we're currently, we're, we do standardize currently. And so pretty much all of the desktops and laptops that we're putting out uh, right now, and including the Macintosh systems, are all using uh, Zubuntu 12.04. Uh, we were previously using Ubuntu 10.04. And one of the reasons we moved to the Zubuntu was it had all of the benefits of Ubuntu, but a more pared down interface that we thought would be more approachable for people that were using Linux for the first time. What's the window um, manager? And so it's XFCE uh -huh. is, um, is what they're using with that. And that was, to us, it seemed like an easier transition for our volunteers who have been using our computers for a long time, instead of introducing them to Unity at this point. It didn't seem like they'd be ready for that necessarily. So going from t to going from 1004 long-term support to 1204, you switched over from uh, instead of jumping into the Unity, just go with the Zubuntu for the XFC and all exactly. of that. Exactly. Yeah. So that was part of that decision, and we had a distro committee that got together. It was comprised of volunteers, staff. Um, that really tried to look at a bunch of distri different distributions that were out there and make a decision about what would be best for considering the hardware that we see are, um, and the needs of the people who we distribute the hardware to. If it's 80 gigabytes or under, it's going to get a hole drilled through it and then uh, you know, information destroyed and recycled responsibly. If it's over 80 gigs, it will get hooked up to a machine and uh, triple wiped and then reset to factory settings which is all in line with the Department of Defense standards for hard drive wiping. Um, so I believe it's one of the reasons we're a popular organization. People can trust us with their information. We're very serious about data security. So what are kind of the ranges of hardware uh, specs that you uh, then donate to the community? Um, like, is, is my 386 going to get into the stream? Or not likely, it no. It's probably going to get recycled. Um, Currently, we're generally, for the lowest end desktop systems that we're putting out right now, uh, I believe we're looking at a low end of the spectrum around Pentium 4 capabilities and everything. Uh, all of our volunteers, uh, we receive what we call freak boxes, and those currently are in a specification range of dual core processors. Uh, we'll get a gigabyte of RAM, it will have a uh, 80 to 160 gigabyte hard drive, a CD, DVD, optical drive, you'll get a flat screen monitor, keyboard, mouse, speaker set, all the uh, cables and cords needed to hook those up. So it's a nice package, these are good machines, uh, you know, as technology kind of gets faster and better, we get faster and better stuff and turn it around to you. Um, we do also build out high-end machines. Um, video uh, gaming machines that we sell in our thrift store and uh, we do the one set of systems that don't adhere to the Zubuntu or don't uh, toe the party line with Zubuntu are um, X XBMC systems that we also make available through our thrift store. Uh, one of the programs that I, and so I've talked about giving computers to our volunteers, but another way that we also give out computers is through our hardware grants program. And we make uh, all sorts of electronics available to nonprofits, schools, churches, 
community change organizations, even community change organizations without that 501c3 designation. And we, uh, it's really important to us to help support the um, people that are trying to make a change in their, in their communities. And we do that through our hardware grants program. So uh, here's our recycling warehouse. Um, if you're working at the table or the bench, you'll get a toolbox and some instructions on how to safely de deconstruct different items. Um, here at the sorting tables, uh, there are so different boxes uh, around the table. Um, this is a great area to become more familiar with cables and cords and gadgets and gizmos and all the computer related stuff that comes in. Uh, you're going to be sorting them into different boxes and you'll get familiar with kind of uh, what we may do with them, what gets tested, what gets recycled. Basically volunteers are pulling from our stacks of systems and servers uh, that have already gone through our system evaluation process and have been deemed too old or broken to be uh, refurbished. So we're breaking them down to their simplest components here at the bench. Uh, this is definitely an interesting way to learn a little bit more about how computers uh, work by taking them apart. So what's the biggest challenge? Getting the computers in to recycle, getting the manpower to recycle them, or to find the places to give them? It all depends on what week you're here. Um, our, when I came, I've been at Free Geek for about a year and a half, and uh, when I came on, it seemed like we did have some trouble giving the computers away. We had a lot sitting on our shelves that weren't moving. Um, I've tried to work hard and we've tried to work hard to get them into a lot more places and so uh, through a successful partnership with another nonprofit we've been able to get over 400 systems into the Portland Public School system this year which has been a really nice accomplishment but that also is a lot of systems that um, would have been available to other organizations as well and so right now one of the challenges we're facing today is a little bit more getting the hardware in um, the donations from households and businesses are slowing down some in regards to desktops because if you think about laptop adoption rates, you know, and, and, and when people are changing over their equipment, we are seeing fewer of those desktops come in, which is fine because we'd like to be able to provide more laptops. Um, but we also need to see those come in as well. And, and though it's harder for those to come in in workable condition or e refurbishable condition that we can work with. Yeah, so what has it been like with the trend of, uh, you know, the, the migration of desktop to laptop? As people become more mobile, you know, you're getting the hand-me-downs, so right. you're a few years behind whatever the, the cycle is, but what kind of laptops are you taking in? What kind of, uh, you know, what's the challenges in uh, refurbishing it's, those? Um, it's been a, we haven't moved as quickly into laptops as we've wanted to. Um, and so that's been a little bit difficult. We would really, we do get a lot of demand from people who come in and volunteer, a lot of requests from people who come in and volunteer, and uh, organizations that request things through our hardware grants program for laptops. And we've ha we're not able to give them to our volunteers currently because we can't do that for all volunteers equally. And we try to provide uh, equal access for everyone who comes in. Uh, so that's been very difficult. Another issue that's been difficult for us is uh, finding volunteers who are able to handle the miniaturized nature of laptops and then also the fact that so many components of laptops tend to be proprietary as opposed to desktops where you really were able to swap out so many different parts of it. And it was a big open space to work in. And so that's been a challenge for us because for us to give out a laptop, we almost have to have um, an extra laptop in reserve in the back in case anything goes wrong with that. We really like to stand behind the work that we do here. And so if you purchase a system through our thrift store, it comes with a six month warranty. People who receive computers through our volunteering here or through our hardware grants program get a one year warranty. And so we'll uh, replace something that we're not able to fix. Uh, what's nice is that also means that they come with free tech support for a period of time as well. And we have a tech support a uh, program that is run by staff, but mainly staffed by volunteers. And it's a really wonderful opportunity for those volunteers to learn about real world tech support issues and, and some of the skills necessary for them to get employment in other places. TVs here, we also have a uh, full Gaylord of uh, CRT monitors. Um, we're not having volunteers break those down in house for very good reason. 
CRT stands for cathode ray tubing. Uh, it's very dangerous to living beings. Uh, there's also mercury, lead, uh, hexium, chromium, all kinds of dangerous chemicals in the CRTs. So uh, we're actually sending those off to our vendor total reclaim. Um, each of the recycling vendors that we participate with have been uh, highly researched. We know they all comply with the Environmental Protection Agency rules and regulations. Uh, for more hazardous materials like the CRTs, we have even a, a higher uh, like R2 certification uh, for those vendors, and we've chosen kind of the most local and least carbon footprint leaving vendors as possible to work with. Uh, we know their chain of custody, meaning we know how things get broken down and where they go. Uh, so that's kind of the overview of basically you can rest assured that you'll uh, be contributing to ethical responsible recycling when you're working here at Free Geek. Um, and to give you a little bit of uh, insight into the numbers and kind of how much we end up recycling, uh, this orange bin is um, when you commit some of the steel, we're going to roll that out and put it out into the uh, blue schnitzer steel bin outside of there. That's a ton bin that we fill and empty each week. We are literally diverting at least a ton a day from the landfills, if not more. So your volunteers that come in, how would you categorize them? Are they mainly geeks? Are they hackers? Are they um, the the computer thing, illiterate? Yes. Uh, the best some. thing about this place is we get the range from people who, who don't understand the difference between left click and right click and really haven't used a computer before to people that were responsible for building some of the first computers that, yeah, that you could build in a home on your own or even industrially. Uh, and it's really wonderful. So we've got a wide range of experience and expertise here. And we really try to make many volunteer opportunities available to anybody, uh, regardless of their uh, physical or cognitive abilities. And so we, we like to tell people that for our, uh, and you may have heard this on the tour even, but we like to tell them if you can bake a cake, you can build a computer. We can show you how to do it if you can follow a cake recipe. Uh, we also have, for the volunteers who are taking apart systems, a lot of people come here because they either want to help their community or because they do want to receive a free computer. And for many people, we offer opportunities to take apart computers or to help us sort different uh, items that come into FreeGeek. And so for those, it requires absolutely no level of technical proficiency. And even for our build program, or the very first thing we ask people to do is take the hardware ID workshop where they are going to learn all of the core components, components of computers. And so we don't ask them to have any advanced technical expertise. You've heard me say it, and I'll say it again. When you've got a great idea, it all starts with a great domain. And let me tell you, every domain in the world has one thing in common. It ends with a TLD, not necessarily TLD, but a top-level domain. And as far as top-level domains are concerned, .NET is one of the most awesome that you could check out. Because if you already have a .com, a .NET is a great thing to accompany it. Or if the .com you want is taken, you don't want to register something 140 characters long, a .NET is totally suitable. It is high highly recognizable, it adds instant credibility to whatever your project may be, and it's what Shannon and I have been registering over at Domain.com for years now. I've got DarrenKitchen.net, HackacrossAmerica.net. It's truly awesome working with these guys. They've been supporting Hack5 for years, and you guys should check it out at Domain.com because they have a special hookup just for us. All you have to do is use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout, and you'll get 15% off their already affordable hosting and uh, and domain names. I mean, .NET start at $8.99, so hey, get 15% off that already. All you have to do is go to domain.com, use coupon code HAK5. When you've got a great idea, it all starts with a great domain. It's time for the trivia. Now, last week's trivia question was, what radio station did Kevin Polson take over to win a Porsche 944? And the answer was KISS FM. That's K-I-I-S Tech FM. Now this week's question is, what is the actual name for PRISM, the NSA-run surveillance program? You can answer that over at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 goodies.